Welcome to part 3 of the procedural file Texas tutorial by PeerPlay. In the previous part we've created a lerping mechanic between the previous and next position in the file Texas sequence. In this part, however, we will create a script that makes the trails react to audio. Yes, again I'm going to implement the audio peer system into visuals. I just love creating audio visualizations in many different ways and here's another way of doing it. You might have seen the previous video of my audio visualization called Phylon, which is entirely created using the system we will create in this part. I will show you the presets of at least one of these drills and the source code of the entire visualization will be available to patrons on my Patreon. We will not be creating the audio visualization in this tutorial, because I've already created an extensive tutorial on this subject. If you haven't followed that tutorial, I suggest to follow that first, so you can create the audio peer script that we will be using in this part. There are numerous of ways to make our file Texas trails responsive to audio, but for this tutorial we will implement two main things. The lerping speed of the trail and the scale of the file Texas algorithm. We'll also create some booleans to loop through the iterations of positions. With these functions in place, we can create many different visuals. Now, I'm sad to say that the entire system of lerping that we've created in the previous part is not the best approach for our current goal, so we will adjust this system to our current needs. The lerping system we created makes sure that the time in between of points will always be at a certain time in between, which is a very good way if you want to have a constant motion for your game objects. What we want is to constantly increase and decrease the speed of our trail based on a frequency in audio. Let's start by creating this and remove any variables we don't need anymore. So for the purpose of our lerping system we've been creating in the previous part, we've been using the fixed update which is run at a constant frame rate. But we don't need to use that anymore and we're going to use the normal update function, where we can just multiply everything by the time.delta time. So let's scroll down to the fixed update and we're going to uncomment the entire fixed update until this point. And we'll use some parts of this fixed update in our update function, but it's easier to start from scratch in a new update. So let's start by writing out our void update. Now let's scroll to the top and remove some variables we don't need anymore and add some variables we do need. So in our previous system we've been using a interval lerp and we're not going to use that anymore, so just remove this line. And the other variable we do not need anymore is the time started lerping. So let's remove this line as well. Now as we want our trails to react to audio frequencies, let's add the audio peer class at the top of our script to make a reference and use that. So let's type a public audio peer and I'll type underscore audio peer. So we can select that in the inspector. Now as we want to create a composition of different trails with different colors, we need to instantiate a material that is specific for this trail with a unique color. So let's add a private material and we'll call this the trail mat. Now we'll also want to specify a color for this trail, so let's say a public color and we'll call this trail color. Now let's scroll down to the awake function. In the awake function we've already made a reference to the trail renderer and now we can apply a material and a color to this trail renderer. So let's say trail mat is going to be a new material and it's going to use the trail renderer dot its material. So based on the material of the trail renderer we're going to instantiate a new material and now we want to set the color that we've specified any inspector on the color. So now what we can do is say trail mat dot set color. We need to talk to the shader and this shader that we are using is the additive shader in the particle section and it contains a option which is called the tint color. So we're going to talk to that. So we'll say underscore tint color which is the name of that variable and we're going to set it to the trail color. Now we simply have to assign this trail mat material to the material of the trail renderer. So we're going to say that the trail renderer dot material 
is equal to trail mat. Now let's start creating our lerping system on audio. And the first thing I'm going to do is go to the void start lerping and I'm going to rename this to set lerp positions. And we're going to remove the top two lines. We're not needing to set the lerping to true every time and we also don't need to have a start of time lerping. And we actually remove that variable already. So let's remove this. And in our awake function, if we are using lerping, we're going to start lerping, but we're also going to set the is lerping to true. So let's say is lerping is true. Now let's go to the update function and let's just copy paste some of these things. Let's go up to here and let's paste it up here. And we're going to remove everything that's in between here. And just for clarification, I'm going to change the else to if we're not using lerping. Which is doing the same thing as else, but it's just a little bit more clear in our script. Now the way we will implement our new lerping system is by creating a float variable of a timer that will increase from 0 to 1 at a certain speed. And the speed will increase and decrease based on the incoming audio. So let's scroll to the top and add the required variables. And the first thing we need is a timer, so let's create a private float and we'll call this the lerp pause timer. And the next thing we need is a speed, so let's also create a lerp pause speed. Now we want to lerp our trail between a minimum and a maximum speed. So for that I'm going to create a public vector too, so we can specify in the public inspector our minimum and maximum speed. So let's create a public vector two, and we'll call this the lerp pause speed min max. And the next thing we'll add is an animation curve, which is a very handy tool to use to specify how the number will increase or decrease. So let's say a public animation curve, and we'll call this the lerp pause anim curve. And the final variable we're going to add is the band on which we want to change our lerping speed because we can change the band to the low frequencies or the very high frequencies and for that we need a public integer to set. So let's say a public int and we're going to call this the lerp pause band. Now with these variables in place let's go to the update function and fill in our script. Now the first thing we are going to declare is the speed at which we're going to lerp. So let's say that lerp pause speed is going to be mathf.lerp. And now we can lerp between a minimum maximum value and the float of time. And that is going to be our timer that we've created. So we'll start with the minimum and maximum that we've specified, which is the lerp uh, for speed min max dot x which is the minimum value and we'll call here the lerp pause speed min max dot y now the audio band in our audio peer class is between 0 and 1 and the animation curve we will set in the inspector between 0 and 1 as well and we will evaluate on that animation curve to get a position between the minimum and maximum speed that we want to apply so we're going to say that the lerp pause anim curve dot evaluate and what we're going to evaluate is the audio pair dot the audio band and as you can see we can choose between the audio band audio band 64 or the buffer or maybe even on the amplitude but for now i'm just going to keep it at an audio band and you can later on add options to choose different inputs so audio band and which audio band we want uh, we take the one we specified in the lerp pause band and that should be all let's close this one off and go to the next line now we need to apply the speed to the timer oh, lerp pause timer plus is time dot delta time multiplied by the lerp pause speed now we're going to use the lerp pause timer to evaluate the lerp between the start position and the end position. 
let's type here the transform dot its local position is going to be a vector three dot lerp between the start position and the end position and we're going to use here the lerpos timer now to prevent this timer to go above one we can do a mathf dot clampo one around this and so it will never go beyond one now if the timer is above one we need to subtract one from the timer so we're going to say if the lerp pause timer is greater or equal to one we're going to say that the lerp pause timer minus is one now that the Lurpulse timer has been reset, we can copy paste these two lines because we want to increase the number and the current iteration. And we're going to call the set lerp positions again. Now as we've changed the start lerping into set lerp positions, we still need to change here the start lerping into set lerp positions. And when we've done that, we can save the script and go back to Unity. And we're going to test out the script that we've got so far. Now in the inspector we can see all the different variables we've got in our script. First we need to select our audio peer class. So let's drag and drop the audio peer onto this slot. And we need to select our trio color. Now I'm going to select here some color. Let's get the color blue. And we can set the alpha as well. And as this is alpha blended shader we can set it somewhere in between here to get some nice transparency. Now that we've done that, I've set up a degree of 51, scale of one, number start one, step size of one. The max iteration we should still set up. And the next part we will set up that it will even loop and go to the max iteration and could fall back to its previous positions. We're going to use the lerping and we need to set up a minimum and maximum speed. So I'll keep the minimum at zero and a maximum speed I'll put up at 50. Now we've got the animation curve here. Now with the animation curve, you have to make sure that you're setting it between zero and one. So this is just a standard linear curve from zero to one. And I'll keep it at that for now. And we need to specify a band on which we want to use. And this band can be between zero and seven where zero is the deep bass and seven is a very high frequency. So I'll set it at one around the kick. Now we've set up the color right here, but this is going to be multiplied with the color that is in this gradient. So to really use this color, I'm going to change this gradient to something else from black to white. So we'll make here a gradient from white to black. Now in the audio peer class I've specified a song to use and we can just play the scene right now and see the result. As you can see the trail speed is now depending on the incoming audio and will increase and decrease. Now you might want to create some kind of a threshold where it will only move when it's above a certain value in the audio. So that's why we created our animation curve. And how we can do that is by, for example, selecting this curve where we can see that if we add another point, I'll put this point up to here, make it straight line. And now every time when the audio is only above uh, a certain value uh, it's going to increase its speed I can even make it very sharp so I'll put this one up here and make this one straight as well and now only when the audio is uh, higher than 0 0.6 then it will increase its speed and otherwise it won't do anything so if I'll play this one you can see a bit different movement and it's more static so now it's still below there you go now I want to talk about one more thing and that is that the Philo Texas algorithm makes it grow larger and larger and you might just want to keep it at the same scale 
and we can simply solve this by increasing the start number to let's say about 10,000 and I'll just decrease the scale to 0 0.1 and now I'm just going to reset the curve to a linear curve now we can change the time of the trail renderer to something very low for example 0 0.2 and I'll change the width to a little bit higher number, so 0 0.2. Now if I play the scene, you should see that the trail stays approximately at its same position all the time. That's it for this part. In the next part, we will continue on creating our trail react to audio and start to work on the scaling as well as looping our animation. Thank you for watching, and if you like this tutorial, hit the thumbs up. To stay updated with new release tutorials, subscribe to the channel.